Amartya Sen recently, while releasing one of his books in India, he did exactly what he is best at, India bashing. Rather, Modi led India bashing. He said that after Modi came into power, India has taken a backward step. But this time, the noted economist and vice chairman of Niti Aayog, Sri Rajiv Kumar, threw an open challenge to Amartya Sen with a piece of advice. Rajiv Kumar replying to Amartya's India bashing said, Structural reforms that have been taken are ensuring the benefits of growth have reached to the last person. If these things are not clear to Amartya Sen, then I think he should spend some time here in India. I actually would like to throw challenge to him to show me another period of four years where so much work has been done for making India cleaner, inclusive and more caring economy. Ladies and gentlemen, question is, what the problem of Amartya Sen is? Why is he not able to see the fast building roads in rural India? Why can't he see that for the first time, millions of poor have been connected to the Indian economy through Jan Dhan scheme? Why Amartya Sen is blind to the fact that for the first time, millions of poor women who earlier were damaging their lungs due to conventional fuel now have been given the cooking gas fuel? Why is Amartya Sen's great economics unable to realize that for the first time the backward northeast states have been connected to the mainstream with the help of newly created rail and road networks? Why is Amartya Sen so oblivion to the fact that millions of poor have been given loans under mudra scheme to set up their own small businesses? Why is the obvious fact of medicine prices having been reduced in large numbers is so obscure to his economist's eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not for the first time that Amartya Sen has given such absurd remarks. Let's see his other instances of such absurdities. In 2010, he gave a statement that he did not wish to see Narendra Modi as the Prime Minister of India. And in 2014, he declared his illogical hatred for Modi when Modi was declared Prime Ministerial Candidate of BJP. It did not behoove of an economist of his stature to give such statements on the basis of generalized rhetoric and not on the verifiable facts. The famous economist Jagdish Bhagavati had challenged his economics and had engaged him in a long debate showing that Amartya Sen was not the only economist from India. Amartya Sen also mismanaged the proposed Nalanda University project, which was started with much fanfare. Out of total committed fund of rupees 2700 crore, he could spend only rupees 46 crore and that too on a building which looked like a cow shed. And of course, on fat salaries to those lackeys whom he had appointed on his whims and fancy. This was the development of Nalanda project achieved by a developmental economist. According to reports in media, it is also said that he had latched to Indian Council of Historical Research on fat remuneration despite not having formally been trained in the discipline of history. His Hindu bashing is equally infamous. He openly asked British government that only schools run by Christian faith should be allowed. His exact words were, Christian schools are perfectly acceptable, but other faith schools are a big mistake and should be scrapped. Now just think. If someone from India had given the same statement only with replacing the word Christian with Hindu, then the same Amartya Sen would have labeled this statement as militant Hinduism, intolerance and what not. In his book Amartya Sen and Hindu Bashing, the author V.S. Desai details the anti-Hindu mentality of Amartya Sen. Amartya Sen lives in foreign and sometimes for a very brief period he visits India. But when he visits India, he is totally engaged in release and publicity of his books and delivering anti-Modi or anti-BJP or anti-India statements. Rajiv Kumar has rightly advised this octogenarian economist to spend some time in India to understand the positive changes India is witnessing. Thank you very much. Goodbye and good luck.